What's going on, everyone? Welcome to today's very first episode of me, actually, working on what I've wanted to work on my entire time I've been in the military. My Camaro! So today we're going to be uh, showing you guys the steps of how to install a big brake kit on the front end of your third gen Camaro. As you can see, these are my stock. Well, they're better than stock. This was the first performance package I went with here, which was like a $300 package. These things have never been used. They've just sat and they're still perfectly fine. And I will be putting these for sale because there's nothing wrong with them. I think these are brand new wheel studs as well. All new bearings. So I'll be including calipers, bearings, dust cover, and the calipers. If you guys are interested, let me know. And I will sell them to you for cheaper than new, obviously, because even though they may be new, they've sat for a year and a half in a storage unit, nevertheless. But let's get straight to it. You need to take off your wheel, obviously, jack the car up, and then you're gonna need to pop your dust cover off. So all you really need is a screwdriver, and then just twist and pop. Dust cover is off. See, this thing is like brand new in here. So you're gonna have to take out your cotter pin here and your castle nut here. And I'll give you guys the size quote on that after I take it off and take the whole rotor off so you can know what size that is. As you can see, we have the old assembly off. The hub and rotor are all in one on these uh, cars for stock and even some aftermarket stuff. That is one of the big reasons why people want to change it out because they don't want everything encased into one. But as you can see, if anyone wants to buy these, the bearings are brand new, never been used. So I'm not lying. So now that we have that off, oh yeah, the socket was inch and a 16th. Now that we have that off, clean your spindle off. You can see I've literally have no miles on this thing. This has uh, been powder coated. Both the backing plate and the uh, spindle are all powder coated. I don't know if I can use the stock. Uh, no, I can't. I think I got to get rid of this. So the next thing you're going to want to do is take off your three 10 millimeter bolts for your uh, backing plate. And then we are going to get the new stuff so I can show you what you guys have to cut off. And as you can see, just look at that. You, you see the reason why you upgrade. This is massive compared to the stock. And as I was saying, the hub is separate from the actual rotor. So that leaves you with a lot more better chances for upgrading stuff. I'll show you guys the receipt because I got this thing back in 2021. It's just sad because I was stationed over in Korea. But in case you guys want to get the exact same one that I have, Order date February 19th. I ordered this the day before my birthday. February 19th, 2021 from Big Break Upgrade. We got the Gen 5 and 6 Camaro. Hubs and brackets 214. The 1 LE bearing upgrade. We got the Gen 5 SS and CTS drilled slide rotors, which is the one I'm touching. And we got the braided hose kit, which is those right there. 687. For all that and that's not including the calipers I had to get separately which I got for another two or three hundred bucks I think so around thousand dollars for your front upgrade kit so this is now that we got everything out um, minus these brackets which is what we need next so I'm gonna hold these brackets just like no just like so and we're gonna have to drill and we're gonna have to tap so let me get these brackets out and situ excuse me, situated exactly how they need to be on there. And I'll show you guys what drill bit you need, what tap you need, and what to be uh, looking out for when doing this. All right, after a quick refresher for my brain, because I haven't watched the video in a while, they go on exactly like this. You see the bottom hole lines up there and up there. So you're gonna have to cut off three taps. Here, here the steering, and this one's gonna have to be kind of a cut up here and then a cut angled here. You're just cutting to the right of the holes because those are the holes you're gonna drill and tap with your 1130, oh no, 1332 drill bit. Um, and then you're going to do a 
12 by 1 and 3 quarter metric tap for those holes for where the bolts these bolts they also gave me four different kinds of bolts uh, it don't fit in the one hole so we're gonna have to drill that or we're going to have to just taper those all the rest fit you got the big ones for your calipers there and there and the top two small ones are your smaller mounting bolts so without further ado uh, let me get out a sharpie and my sawzall and we'll start going on this and just like that you can see those are the marks we should be cutting right to the right of the hole this bump steer off the bottom for steering stop and you're gonna have a cut here and then a cut up top once you do all those cuts We'll be going on to the drill and tapping of these holes, so I'll be back once I cut these off for you guys. And just like that, guys, we have all three tabs cut off. My beautiful powder-coated spindle is now in shambles, but lower tab, side tab, and this tab, and everything works. The way you can test it, you put the uh, bottom bolt in, and then just make sure you are uh, got the center ring on both your holes. If you got that and the bolt goes through, you've cut enough off. So now we're going to drill these out with our drill bit, our 13 30 seconds drill bit. I'm just going to double check that this is the right size. Make sure you drill these things straight. If you don't drill these things straight, then you're not putting the bolts in straight. And then it might not uh, be able to be tightened enough because you're going to lock tight these in. This one you're going all the way through and this one you're going to be stopping a certain depth. I'll get to you uh, once I start drilling these things out. So a little tip, we just did this one straight with the size. It was it was rough cutting, just big jumps. So for this top one, we're jumping up small increments on this thing. And it's not wanting to grab sooner as fast. So just make sure you do that. And then for this uh, one that we're talking about up here, you gotta make sure you have that depth. So if you put your drill bit up to this, that is exactly how far you have to go in the top so just mark your drill bit with some paint and do that and then we'll go to the tapping stage and everything should be good all right we drilled the top hole no problems after the step up it was much smoother there's our white tick mark and just so you guys can see we still have about an eighth inch of space before we would bottom out so we've drilled far enough in now we're going to get the right tap out that you need for this um I got my tap and die set right here. So, if you get a tap and die set, or say you don't know what size you need, most tap and die sets come with uh, come with something in here to help you with that. It's these right here. This is to check the pitch of the threads. And the way you do that is they are grooved. And if it is grooved the same as the bolt, they'll fall exactly in line with the threads. If not, you know you don't have the right one, you keep going until you get the right one. That way you know what tap you need. So instead of having to buy like a whole set like this, although this wasn't too expensive, you can buy just the one you need, which is right here. Metric 12 times 1.75. That is the one you need for this job. If you just want to buy one tap instead of the whole thing, this is the one to buy. And then you're going to need that your tap holder. So just a tip for these, I don't know, I'm not going to judge you guys on whether or not you've ever tapped something before, but you always want to make sure that you're holding this straight 90, always. You want to check up and down and left and right, make sure you're going straight in. And you want to go a quarter rotation, back off, a quarter rotation, back off. Keep going until you're all the way through where you bottom out, it's the bottom tap, that's why it's flat. And, uh, and then once you do that, you clean the threads out, you blow it out with air, or you use oil. You also want to always use oil. This isn't the best thing to use, but it's all I got. So PV Blaster is now our lube for the day. So I'll get back to you guys after I tap these holes and show you how it came out. All right, everyone, welcome back. As you can see, we have them both drilled and tapped now. Uh, we did have to drill this hole bigger. I made a mistake, didn't drill it big enough, so I just drilled it half inch slightly sloppy in there but that doesn't matter so now all that's left to do is put some red loctite and tighten this down uh and then we'll go to the other side actually no i'll show you part numbers for all the bearings for the actual spindle but this is it for all the big modifications to your uh spindle cut drill and tap and i will not be needing that dust shield so whoever wants to buy those i'll include the powder coated dust shields with it because you don't need it for this upgrade 
it already is uh, contained with the new uh, rotors. So uh, I'll torque these down real quick and then give you guys part numbers and show you guys the bearing install. All right, everybody, that is all torqued down. Now I figure I'll show you guys the part numbers for everything as far as bearings. So you have part number 8871, I believe, is this. This is your uh, seal for the back. So that's your seal on the back. Then you have your LM67010. This is your rear bearing. This is the bearing on the back on that seal this is your front bearing here this is part number lm67048 and that is the bearing that goes up top and then lastly but not least let me just double check these work because i haven't checked these yet these are your dust caps for the end which definitely works so part number for this is 618102 for your spindle dust caps. And that's all your part numbers, guys. I'm going to pack this, put this hub on. I don't think I'm able to put my stock. I'm not going to put the caliper on right now because I got to get them uh, powder coated and everything. And I can't because these are stock size rims and you have to run 18 inch rims for these. But I'm hoping that I can still fit just the, cap the rotor underneath this rim and I can just hold off on the calipers for now. Either way, I'm gonna send you. I'm gonna uh, put these on so you guys can see what they look like. But let me pack the bearings real quick and get it installed, and then I'll give you guys an update. All right, everybody, we have the uh, preload set on this thing and the bearings packed. Still use stock retainer, stock uh, castle nut, and you can reuse your what you call it, your cotter pen if it wasn't destroyed. Which mine wasn't, so we're gonna reuse it. Just bend it out just a little bit. And seal this thing up with the dust cap, you know? All that good jazz. Um I'm just looking at this thing. I don't I'm pretty sure stock. I can't oh yeah, I definitely can't put stock back on. So worst case scenario, I'm running it just like this until I get breaks, since this thing is obviously not going anywhere soon. But that's how you do it, guys, on one side. Uh, one thing to mention, I did have to put a washer here. So I didn't drill in far enough. So I ended up having to washer it just that little sixteenth of an inch out so it would grip. Stumbling on my words, I don't know why. But um, yeah, the moment y'all been waiting for. Let's put on this caliper. Actually, wait. Dust shield first, then caliper. But the dust shield is... Uh, satisfactory as well just give it a little uh, tap tap that looks beautiful guys that is a work of art Ooh. oh these things are big these things are very big put the keeper in just for uh sake of keeping it you know uh -huh. oh my gosh this is the brakes you want if you're gonna have 400 or more horsepower guys i'm sorry there's no reason to upgrade your engine without upgrading your brakes y'all are just risking your safety out there but the moment you've really been waiting for is to see whether or not this fits under a stock rim without a caliper which I am curious to find out as well. So we'll tighten this real quick. Oh, ain't no way this is fitting. I'm seeing it already. Ain't no way, guys. that back the rotors will fit so now I gotta take it off and get the right rotor so that's good and this is gonna about conclude my video because you guys saw I had to do one side you don't need to see the other I'm gonna get the correct one not front passenger side 
put it on, put my wheel on, finish the other side, and be done with it. And I will be putting these up for sale on Facebook. Um, I'm located in Texas. So if y'all search me up on Marketplace for around the Fort Hood area, I will be posting these. And, um, yeah. I don't know what else I was trying to say there, but I'll see you guys later for another video. I'm hoping to do some more work on this thing, even though this isn't the body I'm going to be keeping. I am looking for a rust-free IROC roller, because I already have the engine and everything. This one has too much rust. As you can see, there's a hole right in the floor pan. I have a new floor pan, and I have a roof that's good. But it would be more time efficient for me to just find a rust-free Camaro, so hit me up in the comments if you have one. If not, like and subscribe, guys, and always, peace out. Cut. Part number for the rotors, AR8680XR. So as I was getting ready to pack the bearings on this side, I realized something that I told you guys that was wrong. Part number for that one, for this uh, LM67010, that is just for the race. You don't need that. You don't need that at all. Um, it comes with this bearing already with it. So this bearing is M12649 or it is a 0318. That's upper, lower LM67048 for the Timken bearing on the bottom. And then again, the seal, which is uh, 8871. All right, and that should be the final, final piece out. Hopefully, I mean, everything's already done on this side, Loctited, so it's just pack, install, and put on the rotor. Um, hit me up with questions, comments, concerns about this, guys. Again, they still fit under stock 16-inch 16, 16 rims without the ro- the, 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 the. See, I can't speak today. They fit under stock rims without the uh, calipers on. With calipers, you definitely ain't fitting them because you only got about half an inch of clearance. That's why you need 18s. But this should be everything. I just wanted to do this because I had the parts lying around. And I was like, you know what? I haven't worked on my Camaro in two years. So let's work on it. And here we are. All right. I'm